thank you for coming this morning. I hope you sleep well. Uh, если вам нужен синхронный перевод, вы можете взять наушнички у девочек, вот, потому что эта сессия будет на английском языке. Вот. I want to introduce you Eric Hemsker. Very good. He's from Holland. Yes. He's managing director of Bass Conference in Netherlands. <laughs> Festival of Games. Uh, I have logo festival in all our oh that pink one <laughs> it's a really nice conference it's business conference and they have very successful formats of business meetings and he want to share his experience with you guys yeah because maybe somewhere we will use this experience in our conference as well so let's welcome eric for the whole crowd. <laughs> I want to I introduce uh, uh, Jakob Paris as well. Uh, Jakob is uh, from Nordic Game, which is the um, games event in the, for the Nordic region. And Alex, what's your last name? Nietzsche Porczyk. Nietzsche Porczyk. From Spill Games. Uh, and Spill Games has been one of the uh, main partners in our pitch and match system in, um, in, 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 in the Netherlands. Um, and what we actually want to want you want to talk about is, you know, um, the reason the reason that we we are here is, in a way, it's conf it's sort of a coincidence. But uh, on the other hand, coincidence doesn't exist either. We started working with Lerica, and she helped us with Festival Games 2012. In a, in it was then in Utrecht. It's now moving to Amsterdam. And you know, by working together, Lerica, of course, was telling about this great company here, Flash Game in Kiev and in Moscow. And uh, Jakob uh, at the first time organizing pitch and match in the Nordic game region. And so when we talked a little bit more about it, uh, we were talking about making, trying to get, you know, these bridges between the different regions, regions in Europe. Because what you see with all the different events is that we like attract Western European uh, um, uh, audience, Jakob, but uh, you attract here Eastern Europe, but you know they don't mingle that much enough, we think. So that's why we uh, started the, the EGCA anyway, to offer something so people can travel around Europe to visit the different conferences, and so we can join forces and have a really good, let's say, pan-European conference. And uh, well, being here today and yesterday, uh, we noticed that actually the need or the interest for this is 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 uh, very important. So, to start off with, I, s I first want to ask you a couple of questions because I mean we're really curious about uh, the ways you guys are looking to go into Western Europe. So my fa first question is, what what is the way now? For you to find somebody who's of interest to you, you know, maybe that, maybe this no, can then website, website. On, online, okay, and and okay, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, we hear, but but is it then? Uh, uh, are you also then looking for uh, Western European co uh, companies or only? Of course not. Oh. Worldwide. Worldwide. Yes. Okay. 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 And and then and then the next step is, so how do you get in touch with the, with the person then that you found? You go to the website, you take the yes. just tell me what you do. Just tell me what you do. Then I don't have to ask the questions. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Take part in conferences. Uh, I did. I did uh, just a website and a form and feel fulfilled form and uh, they contact me and then I mail them try to find out. Mail them and. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. And 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 if you if you go through that process, you know, what what wh when is the first live meeting? You usually at some conference. So you you uh, in February. <laughs> but, but I'm I'm working now for about uh, four months with uh, Chilingo, and the first time I will find them in February and meet them. In uh, in in. in I Hamburg. will meet them in this February. Yes. Yes. In Hamburg or here? No. 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 
I will be meeting them yes, in February in uh, Saint Petersburg on in Saint Petersburg. Conference. Okay, okay, okay. So, so there comes then a time that you guys meet. Yeah. So you go make your schedule and and uh, uh, but in, 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 and how long does it take usually? A couple of months that you meet finally somebody that you're going to do business with. It depends how much you want to sell. Sure, but if you want, let's say if you want to sell a lot, let's let's do it. Let's. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. We, we make a video and we need to... The sound, okay. Can you say it again? <laughs> okay, it depends how much you want to sell and it doesn't have limits at all. Okay, okay, okay. Because, because uh, um, that's, that's just one person that you're meeting, yeah? And, 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 and how do you meet, let's say, the people that you don't know yet, that you cannot search? How do you find those? You can't search them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a trick. <laughs> How do you meet those? Do you meet them at conferences? You can also stalk them. Sorry? You can also stalk them. You, you can stalk them. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> you can stalk people. That's a good tip. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> How do you do that, uh, Jacob? Do what? <laughs> stalk people. Stalk. Find people. How do I stalk <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what is that? How, how kind of question is that? How do you find people that you don't know yet, but could be of interest to, uh, to you? Yeah, I, I think I, you know, use a combination of, of all that's being mentioned here. You know, online, uh, LinkedIn is a good way of, of getting in contact with people. Um, but of course, networking events like this and, and what we do back in, uh, in Europe, uh, in, in, in Holland and in, in Sweden, is of course crucial too, because... Um, yeah, the best meeting is face-to-face, uh, -face, I think. I mean, the eyes cannot lie. You know? Exactly. Does everybody, when, you're, when you finally start doing business, do you really have the need then to, to meet face-to-face? -face? Is that something that you really need then at a po certain point in time? If it's your first meeting, so yes, you need yeah? to meet. Okay, okay, okay. Because, because what, 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 what I've noticed, I've been doing events for quite a couple of years now. And uh, I, I, I usually did like exhibitions, you know, so another type format than this, because this is more a conference. And what I noticed was, and I was noticing that a lot of times is that there were people that could be interesting to each other that were sitting and having a sandwich, but they were sitting back to back to each other and they never met. And I didn't see that happen once. I, ha I, see, I saw it happen a thousand times. Jacob. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right on, brother. Okay, no, no. who's uh, who's starting to sing the music? It's a gospel <laughs> church here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a good singer, so. Uh. No, actually, actually, I think uh, you 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 you're pointing at something really important. I mean, um, sometimes it can be good to actually to do, when we do conferences, we tend to think that you know. It's about getting growing as big as possible, and we, you know, oh, we need to look like GDC in San Francisco because that's where it's happening and that's where everybody goes. But in fact, that can be that can be uh, like problematic too if it, you want it to meet people. Less effective. Yeah, exactly. So what we aim at at, at Nordic Game is uh, to, uh, I mean, intimacy is kind of our middle name in a way, and what we want with that and what we mean with that is there's like. We want the, you know, the developers to meet the publishers, we want the, uh, the graphic designers to meet the CEOs, we want the execs to meet the uh, guys on, uh, on, on the floor, if you can call it that. Yeah. Um, and that kind of that process is really important that when you create like an environment for that, it's, it's, it's important that it's not too big. I mean, I'm going to GDC, yeah, there's a lot of people there. And you want to meet them all, but it's not, just not happening. It's you, too it's, crowded. It's, it's impossible. Yes. And, if, and a question for you, Alex. Just off the bat, so, uh, you know, Alex stepped in, so uh, his colleague was, uh, was sick. He did something which you shouldn't do in this country. But do my not drink tap water. Do, do not drink tap water, but my colleague or his colleague didn't know. Um, what, for you, you know, you've been to a lot of events yourself as well. What, what, were the, what, what were the events that you really think back of and say, yeah, that was a really good event because this and this happened? Flash game. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a valid question because uh, at conferences like GDC, if uh, your title has you know, business development in it, you will have a lot of meeting requests. 
and it's very hard to filter out the meetings that will actually become useful and not get stuck in you know back to back all day meetings that will give absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have a uh, relevant setting where you know what you want and you know how to get it versus just coming into a conference and being stuck in 50 meetings. Exactly, exactly. Because um, uh, if, if, uh, just another question for the people here. When, when, you, when you plan your day here and you plan meetings, you send out like an email with your time schedule and then you ask like, you know, can we meet uh, then and then? I still have time slots like that or how do you do it? You just contact the people that you know and how do you do it? Yeah? Yeah, you, you have the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. Just in an uh, impersonal way, let's say. Okay. So it's not something like, okay, you know, I have a schedule and you have some time. No. I really respect that person. That's why I want to meet with you. Yeah. So when do you have time? And but it, but the thing, the point that I'm making, of course, is that when you're doing, uh, when you're planning these meetings before, usually you only get to the people that you know, or you get to the uh, environment of of the people that you know that you might know or are, might be interesting. So it's it's that's why I started with my question: How do you meet the guys that you don't know yet? and are, that are of interest to you. Okay, you can organize some presentations, some discussion. So, yeah. you know, it will be specific conferences and you will have a lot of targets, like representatives from the target group. Okay, so we can organize some presentation and mm -hmm. just speak about your questions. Okay, okay, but you, yeah, you don't always have the room for that and then it's a presentation, of course, uh, I mean, the presentation is always one person with a lot more people, you know, and with other people you want, you know, to have the one-on-one -on -one, uh, contact. So, so what, what I've seen as my experience, and I, um, I will ask it uh, Jakob and Alex again, is that when I started organizing events, you know, what the event organizer uh, does, and I'm not saying it's happening here, but what the event organizer does in terms of commercial uh, ways and communication, organize the event, Try and get as many sponsors as possible. Try and communicate about it. And then, you know, try and make sure everything works out. But that's it, you know. When I was working, uh, when I started working in the exhibition industry, it was like, in those days, can't do it anymore. I started working there. There were colleagues there waiting to get a fax and just sitting there, you know. Okay, yeah, the faxes should come in now with the, with the sponsor contracts. Yeah, great, 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 great. And in those days, we didn't know how many visitors we could expect, so we just opened the doors and saw what was happening. And now, w when we have the, the technology, we do a little bit more, but not v much more than that. Is it true? Very true. Very true. <laughs> no, but, but how, do, how do you experience that, Alex? When you, when you are a sponsor, what does, what does an organization do for you uh, more than, you know... Uh, 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 paste some logos on, on different things and... Well, uh, if we are sponsoring an event, I would uh, expect uh, some sort of convenient meeting spot. Mm -hmm. Not just running around somewhere. And uh, I would expect an easier way to book those meetings. Okay. Where the convenient spot is. Okay. And because... Yeah. I also want to know how many people to expect, obviously. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I want to have a list of uh, companies uh, that are attending it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why we started this uh, uh, matchmaking, and that's one of the reasons why we want to uh, introduce this matchmaking uh, format also in, in other areas of Europe, is that the, the philosophy that we have is that we really want to get to know you. You know, we want to know also not only our sponsors, we also want to get to know our visitors. So what we can do then is add and an, an, another quality to the event, which is matchmaking. I, I don't know, has, ever, has ever, anyone ever here been to a temping agency? Do you know what it is? Temping agency for t temporary uh, work? You know, you, you go to the agency, they do an intake with you, they ask you, what do you want? What kind of work do you want? Blah, 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 blah. And so, and you also have these job boards, of course, with uh, uh, quite advanced engines to do matchmaking. Um, but you know what we strive for is to have the best quality meetings for our audience, and pitch and match, uh, which was developed, helps us help you uh, realize that. So 
What we see, of course, is there's a lot of things happening, a lot of meetings being organized, and you know, let's, let's, we don't want to cancel that. When, you know, we want to have that happen as well. But what we know from all the sort of statistics that we have is that, let's say, now you have, um, have uh, like a 60% chance of having a good event, and introducing something like that will improve it by you know, 10, 20%. I mean, we don't say we can ever get to the 100%, it's impossible, but we can really help you have a better event because of uh, the pitch and match environment. I, yeah, I totally agree. I think it's about that, like the 360 degrees experience that mm -hmm. you want out of a conference. I mean, you, know, you want to go and to, to get smarter, to, get, to learn something from the sessions and the presentations. You want to network in a casual way. You want to say hi to people and just, you know, build up your network. And then, of course, you want to do some business too. Yeah. And I think that for us anyway, we uh, did the conference um, eight times where we used different solutions. We, we tried to build our own meeting system. We tried to do it with a, a partner. We tried to not having a meeting system. Um, and for us, it was really the missing link. We were kind of looking in the dark for, you know, how to uh, fulfill this kind of um, whole experience that we wanted for our audience. Yeah. Um, so, so pitch and match in that sense uh, is a really, really um, helpful tool. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the, 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 that the whole reasoning behind us working together and also us working together with Flashcam and, we're, uh, and we are also in the process of trying to get uh, like a, 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 an event from the United Kingdom joining our alliance is really to try and offer our, our yeah, the gaming industry, I put, I'll put it that way, to, 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 to offer them like a, f a formal efficient structure where you can organize things around. So. And, and yeah, in a way, it's you know very boring, of course, <laughs> because this is not a game, and uh, you are uh, game developers, and uh, you know this is really about doing business. But I mean, the other way around it is like how how much time would you like to spend on developing your game? The most time you can have to spend on it, wouldn't you? I mean, if other uh, 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 people can help you have better meetings, more interesting meetings, uh, increase your chance of success, it means that you can work on the thing that you should work on, and that is creating great games, which I'm sure you all can do, or publish them, or distribute them. And we try to be good at what we do, and that is bringing the right people together in the right environment. And you know, the shitty thing about Europe is that if you go, if, if you go to, to, to Europe as an American or as an Asian and you really want to uh, do business in all of Europe, you have to go to Western Europe, you have to go to Southern Europe, you have to go to the UK, you have to go to Nordic region and you have to go to Eastern Europe because it's all different sort of uh, areas of Europe that you need to get to know before you can really do good business there. Because uh, who's, 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 uh, you have game, uh, you're a game developer? And you have, your games are being played all over the world? Okay, okay. Just, just find a publisher. Yeah. And who, 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 who's your, who are you working with? FDG. Sorry? FDG from Germany. Okay, okay, okay. So you found the partner there, and, and where did you meet those guys? You met them via internet and then, or at the conference? Yes. And game in Moscow. Ah, okay, so they came here. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Now, how do you meet blah, 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 blah? How do you build your network? I'm just going to get through the, uh, through the system a little bit. Yeah, you don't see it. Maybe you see it on the screen there. I'm just going to tell you real quick how it works uh, because uh, it's a format that is made up of like an online uh, tool that we've developed in combination with uh, offline uh, activities that we develop to make sure that these meetings, uh, that we get the best out of it. So the, the first step in, in when, when, uh, when a conference uh, starts working with this system is we install the uh, online system 
you get into the system as a user. You have to upload a couple of uh, information about you, like you, you know, you make a profile. So within the system, people uh, uh, can see your profile. They know a little bit about you, and you can do the first bit of your pitch, so to speak. So you say, you know, we have a really great game, and we're looking for publishers in, you know, whatever uh, Spain to publish this game. So please, Spanish publishers or distributors, meet with us. And then, you know, you, you do that in like two, three minutes, five minutes maybe, and then uh, you get into the system and then you can see all the other participants and you can start arranging meetings. There's a calendar in the, in the system. There's meeting uh, spots allocated in the system. So, you know, you say, okay, we meet in room one at 11 o'clock and then the system takes that into account so you cannot plan another meeting then. If it's canceled, the time slots open again, so it's, you know, it works well. Um, but, but in step four, that is where we think we really can make a difference because, well, Jakob told you uh, there, they, uh, that, that, there, that uh, Nordic Game has developed and tried to develop matchmaking systems as well. Um, and to be honest with you, I mean, I think our system is a good system, but I don't think that uh, that, that, that is the real uh, value of what we're doing. I think it's the combination of making it as easy as possible with the technology uh, that we have, but then we really want to get to know you and start person per personalizing your, your, your match. Yeah, go ahead. We were just talking about it would be great if you had a demo so you can, so you can show people how yeah, to do it. Yeah, I've got a demo actually, but I don't know if the internet is working. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I've yeah, got the demo. I, again, I've got the demo. again, I think also that, that, that you should mention that, uh, in my point of view anyway, um, pitch and match is a great system, but it's not, uh, f it's not like it's done. I mean, you can continue putting things on top of it, um, and that's exciting, I think, so too. Yeah. Um, uh, can you maybe uh, like explain what, what the system is like? Because uh, we're now talking in abstracts. Can we be a bit more concrete? Yes. Um, uh, you know, like, what does it work? Is it like Outlook? Is it like, uh, you know, like any other uh, calendar manager? Or yeah, I can, I can, I can. Maybe I can do a little bit of a demo uh, in just a bit. But uh, uh, it's it's just a, a web-based interface, and so uh, the first button that you see is a big button, sign up. You press it, <laughs> and it can go wrong. If we looked at the uh, presentation of uh, Al Rabinowitz yesterday that somebody doesn't know which button to press, but it's quite obvious, we think. <laughs> and then you get access to the system. You fill out like a form. So you put in your name, your company profile, and, you, uh, and then you say publish or something like that or save. And then your, uh, your profile is uh, published. And then you can uh, 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 have a look around in the system and search other companies by keywords. And so there will pop up uh, like a, a couple of companies that match with the keyword, and you can see if they're interesting or not. So it's not a the engine that we use is not that good as it would be uh, with a job board, for example. Uh, and I think that if 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 we would f further develop it, it would be nice to have a bit of a better engine, a bit of a stronger engine. But, but, but the advantage that, that the system offers now is, you know, if you want to have good business meetings, you have to put work in it anyway. And uh, uh, going through all the different pitches uh, is, in a way, an I investment in knowing who will be there and knowing that, you know, if you do only uh, the searching and the matching with the engine, you will miss out on a couple of companies as well. What did you want to say, uh, Jacob? Yeah, I just want to say that I think like what's really strong about the system is the match. Actually, there is a match maker in it, yeah. so that you have a live person that actually is helping you with. Uh, because if you do your profile and you say, "Yeah, we do really great games and we're looking for a publisher," that really doesn't say a lot, does it? In, except for that you're making games and you want to publish it. Yeah. But you know, you can be you, you, you might not want to be more specific uh, in general. But if with this uh, live matchmaker, 
you're actually able to, he's actually, or she actually is helping you finding the right, um, the exactly. right company so you don't waste time or... Exactly, exactly. And, and I think that's crucial for the system too. Yeah, I think so too. And that, that's why I rather talk about a format than uh, about the system because, you know, uh, uh, there's many me meeting system software out there. I mean, that's, and, and, and every day somebody else is thinking, I'm going to be make the best matchmaking or meeting software. But the, the, it's the personal aspect of it that makes the difference. And the personal aspect is that, like I said, you know, we really uh, get to know all the participants in this environment. We really uh, are asking them, you know, uh, you know, what, what, what do you want to sell? We will help them put it in their profile the best way. So, you know, it's not only saying, you know, where we have the best game or we're, the, we're, we're, uh, we're the, the best game developer or really, we are really good in, in developing Flash games and then, you know, that's it. We're really looking about what you want to do and by asking a couple of questions, we will make that more like uh, um, cutting edge with you. And then what we also do is that we ask you, okay, which companies would you like to meet? And we will contact those companies so that you won't have to do it yourself anymore. And why is that, uh, why can we do that or why is that helpful? Is that what we usually notice, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if you noticed it this year, but that if we, if we get a certain group of companies in, in, in the pitch and match, we usually notice that they are looking for certain other type of companies and so, we can call this other company and, not, and tell them it's not only one company that wants to meet you, but it's like five other companies that want to meet you. So come over and join, and, join, and join the event. And for us, I mean, that really works well, doesn't it? So, yeah, it's really a combination of, of online and, and, and offline uh, activities that we, uh, that we do. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Do you, you want to add something to it, Jacob? <laughs> Alex? <laughs> Are there any questions? What is the address to register? What is the address to register? Okay. Um, well, the, we, we, the, uh, I agree. Yeah, okay. No, um, we, uh, we create the pitch and match environment during our events. And so uh, I think we agreed yesterday that we'll, we will um, set up the system for our events. Uh, Festival of Games is in April 2013 in Amsterdam. And uh, uh, Nordic Game is in May in Malmö. And so we will uh, uh, have a live pitch and match environment in January, right? So and then you can, yeah? Uh, we are from the um, advanced keyboard uh, company, and we want to ask you how do you estimate uh, the uh, <coughs> the demand of the European market uh, for Russian developers? Ah, that's a very good question. I like that. <laughs> no, uh, maybe you can say something about that, Alex. Actually, did you hear the question? <laughs> the question was how do you see uh, the demand for um, uh, Russian developers in uh, Western Europe? Uh, I see it being a um, like a scary area. So uh, when um, uh, at least uh, our partners uh, are interested in getting games from Eastern Europeans, we go like, ooh, it's cold and scary and vodka, etc. <laughs> but uh, there is also the obvious uh, need for that because uh, whenever uh, you see a, a, a game in the top chart somewhere, uh, there is like a 50% chance that it's going to be from Eastern Europe. And everyone really sees that. So um, I think uh, if uh, there is an easy way to connect the both, uh, there can be a match made in heaven. However, um, uh, what I see uh, happening at least uh, over here for us is, uh, well, I speak Russian, so uh, people are you know, more or less uh, trying to approach me, but whenever uh, people come up to our stand and there is no one there who speaks Russian, it's uh, like uh, someone grabbing a business card and then running away. <laughs> so um, 
I, I think uh, that uh, some formats like uh, the speed game dating we had yesterday where it's actually forced so that you, you have to sit and look at the game even though you don't speak the same language, it's all about the game, right? So uh, if uh, there is a system where I can definitely be sure that my meeting will be uh, focused on the product and that I will benefit from it, then it's a good system. Okay, okay. Okay, cool, thanks, good answer. Couldn't have said that. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Okay. Yes? Okay, hello. Uh, can you say the situation, so you are from Europe, so you're making games and anything else, or other companies in Europe, making games mainly for Europe, or they target American market also? And uh, uh, not all European people speak English, let's say, yeah? so when you make the game, you need to make it in English language or local language, and how do you manage to translate it to different languages and how you deal with it? So uh, we specifically uh, tend to get most of our content in English initially, and uh, if the game is really heavy on text or story, we actually localize it ourselves. So we work with a developer, uh, we get like an Excel export of all of the text and localize it and have an API so that uh, the developer can build it into their game and then uh, based on certain parameters, the browser will just help select which language to use in the game. So uh, you're absolutely right that there is a, a need for uh, regional games, but it doesn't mean that you design your game for a specific region. You can still make it international, and then uh, if your publisher is a local player, so has local websites like we do, then uh, they should help you, a good publisher should help you localize it. Okay, any more questions for Alex, for Jakob, for me? No? The name of the conference is, uh, it's, 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 uh, I put our contact details in it, but we are Fast 12 Games, so it's uh, the, the pink logo. And then uh, uh, Jakob is Nordic Game, and this is uh, our alliance, EGCA. Uh, by the way, we have an advertisement about Festival of Games in our brochure of the conference, so you can find the information. Yes. Okay, Emma. More for the audience than for you guys. Okay. Um, where, what event do you go to? Like you come here for Flashcam and what other events or conferences do you go to? White Knight? Yeah. Let's just say uh, in microphone. Uh, so, uh, the most popular conferences uh, in Eastern Europe, yeah, it's Cree, uh, it's the biggest one in Moscow. Also, White Knight Conference, it's a new conference about mobile game developers, it's really nice as well. And, oh, something with microphone. Sociality Rocks is really nice, it's about social games, it's in Moscow and uh, Kyiv as well. Uh, are you asking just about Eastern European conferences or Casual Connect, uh, Gamescom, <laughs> Festival of Games? Also Mobile Fest. Mobile Fest. Okay. Mobile Fest. Okay. okay. No, because we uh, we were talking to a couple of people yesterday as well, and and what, uh, what uh, is the language spoken at the different uh, conferences that you mentioned, Lyrica? Is that is that Russian? Uh, Russian, Ukrainian. Yeah, it's yeah. local conferences, and uh, most of visitors are speaking Russian. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, these days, even if you go to GDC, you will hear Russian everywhere. <laughs> yeah. In San Francisco, <laughs> that <Okay>. was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also Russians that don't speak English. Yeah. 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 It's like a little community, underground yeah. game developers. I, I, I know about this guy that uh, years ago, this Spanish guy who was uh, selling, uh, who didn't speak English and was every two weeks in America. And he was, uh, he was going around just speaking Spanish, you know. But anyway, okay, cool. Anything, uh, anything more? Or is this it? 
<laughs> okay, thanks a lot for your attention and I hope to see you in Amsterdam and Malmö. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Lirica. Thank you very much. Cool.